Welcome to Pennsylvania in Focus. I'm Anthony Hinnon, Pennsylvania reporter for the Center Square. Joining me today is the Center Square's Pennsylvania editor, Kristen Smith. Kristen, we've had some back and forth in Pennsylvania about schools, sexually explicit material, you know, controversial books, and we're getting some action on the state level. What is going on? The Senate Education Committee recently moved a bill that would uh, require parental permission for students to check out sexually explicit content from school libraries. Uh, This is something that's been batted about in the universe, uh, the legislative universe that would be, uh, for the last two years. There's been a lot of hand-wringing over just the right way to write this legislation, and there's been a lot of hand-wringing over how to show the public what lawmakers are talking about when they're saying sexually explicit material. And if readers or listeners want to find this stuff, they can go to the PA Senate GOP website, go to Senator Ryan Ament's website. There was a lot of legal discussion about how to display this material. You could even uh, go watch the recent Senate Education Committee hearing and they, they discuss it at length and show pictures and all that sort of thing. We're not going to get into that. And we're going to sidestep here the ideological debate and arguments that are happening on both sides because quite, you know, both sides are are just, you know, particularly one side. And there's a lot of mischaracterization about what this bill does. So we're going to just throw that aside. Um, if you're hearing ideological statements from either side of the aisle, ignore them because we're just going to talk about what this bill actually does and why some people, some groups are opposed to it. So like I said, parents would have to opt into viewing this material. School librarians in particular saying, uh, this is really uh, onerous. This is going to be really hard for us to pull off. We already review books and we're willing to work with parents who don't want their kids to view certain material. And we would honor those requests. Also, you need licensed librarians in every school to to do this work, to keep track of how many parents are opting in versus opting out. Um, and that's just something that over 50 school districts just don't have. Um, it's expensive. And so it would fall on people who are not even qualified to do this work to make it happen. So that's kind of at the core of the administrative side of this bill. And so that's where you're seeing a lot of opposition. The teachers union stands behind the Libraries Association uh, on this. Of course, there's school district uh, directors, uh, elected school board officials who are saying the state needs to help them because this is an incredibly divisive issue in their communities. Families and parents feel very strongly one way or the other. Some say it's you know, madness that some of these books, which depict very graphic sexual acts, and they're in middle school and high school libraries primarily, that these books um, shouldn't be available to children. It just doesn't make any sense why this is even allowed. Then there's other parents who are saying, this is complete censorship. It is something that we don't support. And so the problem is here is that Uh, school officials are kind of caught in the middle. They don't have any guidance from the state about how to handle this. So then they have to implement their own policies. And that kind of opens them up to a lot of trouble that they don't have support from the state on. So the sponsor of this bill is saying, hey, this is us giving some guidance about what to do. So does it look like, uh, you know, Republicans control the Senate here, Democrats control the House, is this bill, does it seem like there's going to be some outcome where this becomes law? either through some compromise, through a watered-down version of the bill, or is this just kind of, does this look a little more chaotic and unpredictable? Stepping back into the ideological conversation here, because it does tie into what's going to happen with this bill. Um, Senate Republicans obviously support it, and they control the Senate, as you said. Democrats do not. They think that this is a slippery slope to censorship. And so they just can't stand behind the bill and they think it's going to have a bunch of unintended consequences. And so the, the Democrats control the House narrowly, but that to me would signify that they're not going to bring this up for a vote, even if it makes it to their chamber, which it likely will. Uh, the Shapiro administration was supposedly involved in negotiations of this bill before they formally introduced it. Uh, Senator Almond said that they walked away from the table at some point. He didn't really give more details on what that exactly meant. So, you know, the governor is not theoretically not on board. Democrats aren't on board. So, you know, two out of three of the key players here don't support this legislation, which to me 
signifies that it's not going to go very far anytime soon. Things change, demographics change, the house makeup could very easily tip back in the other direction. But then again, you'd have to have Shapiro okay with it. So at this point, it's more of an ideological standpoint that Republicans are taking. They're kind of planting their flag and saying, hey, this is a big issue to us. This is something that uh, local officials are telling us is a huge problem. And this is where we stand on it. And I'm sure like a lot of things that have happened over the last few years, you know, lifeline scholarships and uh, pandemic era thing, you know, legislation, it's not going anywhere, but Republicans want to be on record that this is how they feel about it. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Kirsten Smith, this is Anthony Hinnon. Please subscribe and thanks for listening.